What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Cognition Fitness TV. As you may hear in the background, today is officially Jay-Z Day, okay? Today is officially Jay-Z Day, okay? Just nothing but Jay-Z all day. Okay, I've been waiting for this album to drop. 4:44. You know, I can't think of the last time I actually like waited for an album to drop. Like I was literally last night, like on title, waiting until 11 o'clock for it to drop. You know, 12 o'clock Eastern time it drops midnight. On the East Coast, Midwest, it was 11 o'clock. So, I'm a, I'm I'm on title around 10 o'clock. You know, get back from the gym. I was like, oh snap, Jay dropping at midnight. You know, like I can't think of the last time I actually waited for an album to drop. I'm trying to think, like, cause the music now is complete bullshit. You know, like. Everybody pretty much put out the same type of content. There's no, there's hardly any type of differentiation between this type of artist and this type of artist. You know what I mean? So it's like once you kind of get something from the greats, you know, like Jay Z, one of the greats, is like you kind of have to make sure that hey, you gotta be a first on this, and just to see what type of like tone and step he was gonna go towards following you know his wife album lemonade you knew at some point jay-z had to say something he had, he had to not quote unquote retaliate but he he had to say his side and, and just get his side across as well so this has been you know speculation for the past couple of years like What's Jay gonna say? Man, Beyonce just destroyed him on his album, like called him a cheater, liar, pathetic. He's getting annihilated on social media. Like, what's Jay gonna say? You know what I mean? Like, everybody been saying that ever since Lemonade dropped. You know, ever since their infidelities, like, that's not normal in a relationship. Everybody go through their bullshit. <clears throat> and, um,. You know, it was just so much speculation on this album. You know, after the, after the first listen, I would say this is a top five Jay-Z album. I will put this album at top five. I will put, of course, my favorite Jay-Z album is The Blueprint. I think number two is uh, either the Black Album or Reasonable Doubt. You know, it can flip flop. But I think number four is like um, the life and times of Sean Carter. I'm like, I, I will put this above Blueprint 2. I will put this above Kingdom Come. You know, I don't really count the compilation albums like that. You know, the album he did with R. Kelly back in the day. I don't really count that as, you know, when I'm listing Jay Z albums, I only count the, I don't count the compilation albums. So I would put this about five, just sonically. This is a bet. This is better than Magna Carta. Vo Magna Carta. I was about to say Magna Carta Volume Two. <laughs> Man, and I'm gonna break down why this album I feel like is better from a civilism standpoint, from a sonical standpoint, from a impact standpoint. Like Jay is 47 years old and he's still moving the culture. Like he's still breaking the internet. He's still getting streams, still heavily talked about on social media. Just as much as Kendrick when his album dropped, I would say this album had more impact than Drake's album, last album. I can't 
can't even think of the last Drake. What was the, what was the last Drake album? More Life. This had more impact than More Life. And Drake is supposed to be at the in the prime of his career. You know what I mean? So it's like Jay at 47, there has to there's gotta be a reason why his impact is still so monumental in the game. And that's because Jay Jay never adapts to what everyone else is doing. Jay has always been a very distinctive artist I them. and he never really gave a fuck about what this artist is doing what this artist is doing what this artist is doing like jay jay's music revolves around his life and that's the best way to compose music you know what i mean like what's happening in your life right now you know what i mean and that's why it's so transparent because we see the evolution and we see the growth of jay-z throughout the years like Jay, from from 96 until now, there's been exponential growth. And that's what an artist is supposed to do. An artist is not supposed to be making the same type of content that they made 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Like, if you talking about shooting, shooting niggas, fucking bitches, throwing up money in the club, buying a bunch of cars, your first album. You know what I mean? Okay, that's that's your life right now. Okay, I guess that's the content that you have to go with. But if you're still talking about the same shoot niggas, fuck bitches, blah, 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 and you fucking 45 years old, or if you above 40 in general, it's like you have to reevaluate your life. Like, what are you doing differently that you did 10 years ago? You know what I mean? Like, content is like, it's supposed to change with growth and evolution. And if your content same type of emotion that's same type of emotion that I had when I first listened to your first album. Like that shit is not really moving the landscape of music. You know what I mean? Like it's not really moving the landscape of music. You know what I mean? That's why I really appreciate Jay Z for not being scared to age in life you know what I mean like there's so many artists today that's scared of aging and they want to sound young every single song that they put out and I'm like that's not you that's not sonically it sounds stupid you know what I mean like you bit you old as hell trying to put out this content for teenagers like doing a dab and, and the nay nay like 40 plus years old dude like, talk about grown man shit. Like, this is a grown man album. You know what I mean? And I'm not 40. I'm not 30. I'm in my early, I'm in my mid-20s. But, you know, some of the stuff that he's talking about in this album is very, very transparent. And I feel like every grown man can gravitate towards it. You know what I mean? Like, grown man necessarily doesn't mean, are right, you 30 or 40. Grown man is very, very subjective. Sometimes people at a very, very young age is forced to be put into grown man situations. You know what I mean? Just based on their circumstances. So age does not dictate the content. But, you know, when I found out that No ID was gonna be one of the heavy producers on the album, you know, just from his work with Kanye back in the day, I knew that sonically, it was gonna be some grown, mature, developed music, you know what I mean? Like, this is stuff that you can play, you know, at a grown people party, you know what I mean? Like 30s, 40s, like this is grown people music. It's unapologetic, grown, you know what I mean? Like, it's so mature. It's so impactful with, with with soul and blackness. I love it. I really, really love it. You know what I mean? Like that's something that I didn't get from Magna Carta. I feel like Jay Z was trying a little bit for a certain a certain amount of songs on the album. He was kind of trying to sound like the youngins. And Jay, we're not young like that. Like let the youngins do the young shit and let the veterans and uh, and uh, and I don't want to say old heads, but the 
more developed artists make mo more grown people music. You know what I mean? Like, it's that simple. You know, he has... There's three songs in particular that kind of moves me. One is the O.J. Simpson. And for every damn the O.J. Simpson song, what's the name of that damn song? The Story of O.J. The Story of O.J. Uh, 444. And Family Feud. I like Legacy too. Those four songs in particular are my favorites. And just let me talk about the story of OJ for a second. Actually, let me put it on in the background. The story of OJ. Hopefully YouTube don't flag my shit. Y'all hear the instrumentation? Y'all hear that? The, sonically, you need like this is just grown people music right here. It's grown man music, baby. My skin is black. So this song is for all you fucking coons out there talking about oh race don't exist. I was listening to the Breakfast Club today and it was a it was a damn coon that called in radio station. It was talking about interracial relationships and he was saying. Oh, this is a colorblind society. There's no such thing as race. And then as soon as he said that, Charlie Ray hung, hung up the phone immediately. He was talking about this dumbass nigga. <laughs> like, so this song is for, for for that coon right there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't you ever forget who you are in this world. You know what I mean? Like, black comes first. Your blackness comes first. I don't give a fuck how far you go in life. Being in touch with your roots, being in touch with your history is imperative to your overall growth. You know what I mean? Like, once you start to detour away from your roots and from your history, that's when you can easily become a coon and you can easily just lose yourself in whiteness. And that's what happened to OJ. You know, OJ, just like any of us, was put in a system of deprivation that purposely targets black people in this country. And when OJ went off to USC, that's when he started to become more acclimated with whiteness based on the fact that he played football. He was a great football player. And, you know, from his past until that point, he really had no type of clue what whiteness was until he got to USC. And being a great football player, he started to lose touch with his blackness and started to become more familiarized from a psyche standpoint with the whiteness, you know what I mean? With white society, with white values. And just over time, you know, getting all the accolades from white people, his psychological, mental capacity started to shift towards whiteness and he basically, basically started to feel like he was above his color, his skin color, which was black. He started to feel like he was OJ. I'm not black, I'm OJ. I'm this figure that's above blackness, you know what I mean? And that's never the route that you want to take. I don't care how many accolades you get. I don't care how much money you get, how much fame that you get. You still a nigga. They still see you as a rich nigga, okay? And you can get that work at any given time, you know? Hence, the OJ case. So I love that song. I love that OJ song, man. That's probably my most favorite song on the album. My second most favorite song on the album is the um, the 444, man. I drank go in. Let me play that for a second. Let me play that 444. 
appreciate Jay. You know, this is basically his comeback to Lemonade. He really didn't have to focus the whole entire album on the issue. He handled that shit in one song, addressed the issue, and was man enough to address the truth about the issue, which was basically him and his infidelities, and he owned that shit. He, he didn't back away like no bitch. He didn't make any type of false allegations of what happened. Like, he like, okay, this is what happened, Beyonce. I confess, this is what happened. You know, like, he, he stepped up like a man. Was what a man's supposed to do in that situation. Like, tell the truth. The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. That's the only way to get past uh, any type of situation is to just tell the damn truth, man. Like, be a man, tell the damn truth, and we'll see how it works out. But at least you got everything, all of that negative energy out of you. You know what I mean? Like, from a psychological standpoint, there's so many benefits just to telling the truth. Like, you, you don't have to make up a lie and eventually lies become lies on top of lies on top of lies and it's just one heavy big ball of negative energy that weighs on you and it kind of just weighs you down over time like you don't need that in your life like that's one thing i like about jay and this song in particular is like all right i cheated and i would do everything in my power to get you back like you know what i mean like i cheated i was an asshole I'm, I'm telling you all of my lies, my fallacies, and I'm getting everything out of my system, you know what I mean? Like, dude, see, this is a life lesson right here. Like, this, this whole song is a life lesson. This is one of the most impactful songs that I've heard from Jay in a long time. Like, the lyricism is just pure, it's raw, it's full of emotion. It's just the content It's so raw It's so unapologetic And it's real You know what I mean Like he not trying to cover up No type of bullshit And that's what I appreciate The truth The truth will set you free The truth Will Set you free Believe that Believe that Believe that
that nobody wins when there's a family feud because basically families the purpose of a strong family is to build a strong community and the purpose of a strong community is to actually build a strong neighborhood okay the purpose of a strong neighborhood is to actually build a strong city you build a strong city next up is building a strong state you build a strong state next is to build a strong region you see how it grows you build up that region that's of economic empowerment that's how it starts that's how it starts it starts with a strong family and rejuvenating and replenishing your money into black owned economic businesses you know what i mean banking got a, a black bank you know what i mean supporting black educational programs Yeah, man, I've been listening to this album like all day, literally at work, man. I've been listening to it basically all of last night, late last night when it dropped. Man, I just love good music, man. I just love good, purifying, rejuvenating, invigorating music. You know what I mean? Like when, when certain type of music like that drops, like this, Kendrick, Lamar, like... Big Sean, like, I just, I, just, I just gotta take my time with it, you know what I mean? Like, I gotta listen to it at least 20 plus times and let it just sink into my soul, you know what I mean? Like, I can't just listen to it one time and just, all right. Like, this music is just so impactful to the soul, like, for real. And so, I hope you enjoyed this album review. If y'all want more hip hop reviews on my channel, make sure to comment, subscribe, share, like, Make sure you follow me at Cognition Fitness TV on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. And I'll holla at y'all later. Y'all have a blessed day. Peace.
key out, chop you up, put you inside the mattress like drug money, nigga.